right into gear. Today we are going to talk about one of the best, most crazy, fucking bizarre franchises that I have ever witnessed in my life, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You guys ready? Hell yeah, bro. Yeah. Uh-oh. What do you got, Anthony? You got another goodie? <laughs> Which movie is that one from? This is Pretty Lady from 1974. The original? Yeah, when he's running out with the chainsaw down the street. Is Gunnar Hansen's skin under that mask? Did you cut it off there or no? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. yeah. We're going to kick it off right now, right away, with the 1974 exploitation film, my, one of my favorites, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original directed by Toby Hooper and written by Kim Hankel. Okay? This movie was based off of the killer Ed Gain in the 70s. It was made by Toby Hooper for about $140,000. It, it made back $26.5 million in the first year of shooting. So I'm going to kick this right off the Rob. I want to hear your guys' opinions. I want to know your backstory, what you know about this franchise, and what, what you like about this movie. Oh, man, dude. I don't even know where to start. The 1974 one is probably – my favorite slasher movie by far. And I think it's one of my favorite movies by far. It's just fucking crazy. Everything that happens from the time they pick up the crazy dude who's caught in his hand in the car to the time she's laughing her ass off covered in blood at the end of the movie. It is probably like the most insane thing I've ever seen next to Tetsuo the Iron Man. I don't know if you guys ever seen that Japanese insanity, but oh my God, I love Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I really do. I just absolutely love this movie. There's almost nothing wrong with it. I don't know, Anthony, you tell me. This is by far my favorite of the franchise. This is just amazing. Everyone watch it if you like horror, and if you don't watch horror, watch it anyway, and you're not allowed to say anything bad about it either. That's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more with Rob. Um, it's definitely yeah. hands down top three best horror movies of all time. Nothing's ever going to come close to it. Um, like, what... Chris was saying with the budget is just insane because they had so little and did so much and made one of the best horror films of all time. And it's the everything about it is just creepy, disturbing, so simple, but yes, yet so effective throughout the whole movie. And it's just something that people will never forget still to this day. I agree with what you're saying. And I want to stop you right there. It was a very simple story for its time. And I want to ask you guys both, would that hold up today? Well, you know, you know jump I'm going to disagree. I don't think it was that simple of a story. Okay. I think it was a simple plot, but I okay. think it's a movie with, like, a very thick subtext. It's really interesting. And that's where the remakes kind of falter, I think. Um, you know, the entire movie from the beginning has to do with the slaughterhouse industry and just factory farming in general and how that desensitizes people to violence. You know, it's funny. I, Go ahead, sorry. No, it's okay. We can move on. I'm going to talk more about that when we get into the remakes because I think the subsex in the remakes is seriously lacking. I think uh, when they go into the backstory of the Sawyer family and later they rename them the, was it the Hewitt family? The Hewitt family, yes. Yeah, the Hewitt family. They, they miss out on that. Like, their reasoning for eating people and murder is because they no longer are getting the sensation, the sadistic pleasure that they were getting through working in the slaughterhouse. No, I agree with that. Um, a lot yeah. of inspiration, because this movie was in the 70s, it came from actually the Vietnam War, the Vietnam War according to Toby right. Hooper. He was saying that like they wanted to show the, the violence that was going on during that time, which, which is pretty crazy. Um, I, I kind of want to go into like the hardships of how they like shot this movie and like one particular scene, the infamous uh, dinner scene with grandpa and everybody sitting around the table and they have Sally tied up and it's just constant tension, constant screaming. And I just want to mention that that scene took about 26 hours to shoot. 
Imagine that. Now, me and you, we've been on sets before, Rob. That yeah. is insane. A 26-hour day. Probably non-union because it would have cost them a fortune to oh, have all that time and a half and double time. But 26 <laughs> hours, they were saying that the food, the stench was decomposing because of continuity. A lot of the actors, including Gunnar Hansen, they stunk because they kept the same clothes on for five weeks on end. Did you, do you want to like elaborate on that? Well, man, the longest day I ever did was the first feature I ever worked on. I put in 25 hours. Oh my God. Afterwards, I had cut my leg the day previously on like a rusty like box cutter and I had to go to the hospital. I got an infection that like half my thigh was just bright red. So, I mean, that's no joke, dude. Once you pass the 17, 18 hour mark, 20 hours, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing you can even keep your eyes open, you know? No, I hear you. Um, I want to mention another fun fact I found from yeah. this book called The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the film that terrified a rattled nation by Joseph Lanza. So, according to him, the prop knife that was used in the film, which contained a t fake tube of blood that Hansen was supposed to squeeze on uh, Burns' finger, it actually malfunctioned. So what I'm getting at is the finger that Grandpa is, like, sucking on in the middle of the scene is actually her own blood. So he was sucking on this woman's blood during the scene. And, and it, it doesn't end there. There, there. There's that other scene before the dinner scene takes place yeah. where the old man... He puts the knapsack on her or the, the potato sack on, on Sarah yeah. and he hits her. They, they said that he wasn't hitting her hard enough and they needed it to look real. So he really beat the shit out of her with that stick. Oh, it took it about eight, eight takes to get that scene. Damn, dude. Yeah. By the time that movie was ending, even though it was a masterpiece, I heard that everybody, all the actors hated Toby Hooper. <laughs> they, they fucking hated him. <laughs> Um, another, another horrible condition I heard was the hitchhiker says that at the very end, when his, his face is on the ground, yeah. when he's, about, he's about to get hit by the big truck, that the, the ground, you could fry a friggin' egg on it. And it was like 120 yeah. degrees. I heard he got like second degree burns from it. I heard that too. I also heard that leather face when he was chasing her through the woods. At some point, the chainsaw ended up flying in the air and he had fallen. So he just closed his eyes and hoped it wouldn't fall on him, and it happened to land near him instead of on top of him. So crazy. Yeah. Anthony, what I, mean, do you I think they took the chain off it, but. <laughs> I hope so. I, I, actually, yeah. I actually heard uh, uh, in an interview, Toby Hooper said that him and one of the crew members, that in one of the scenes uh, when he was killing someone, that they were on the side of Leatherface. They were spitting blood onto his apron from their mouth to give oh. it the splatter effect. <laughs> like, how crazy is that? That's beyond it, dude. <laughs> hey, hey, can we just talk about how great that, like, dinner scene sequence is? I just, uh, that's, even I the camera angles the they use. The whole movie. Dude, when they go, I think it's the best scene of the franchise, man. When they, like, go in close to her eyeball and stuff, it's just fucking creepy. Yeah. That just isn't, the other movies, I think every movie of the franchise has a dinner scene, and none of them are nearly that good. Well, it's just so, like, it's so, like, nerve-wracking, like, and yeah. just so much tension. Like, you just want it to be over. Like, if you were actually there, you just want, you, you probably just want to die at that point. Yeah, and you know what else? Like, they don't drop the tension at any point. Like, once you hit that point in the movie, she's, like, running out. She jumps through the window for the second time. He's chasing her down the street. She waves down a car. This random dude gets out. This is the only part of the movie I don't understand. The guy just, like, gets out of the car instead of driving away in the truck. I don't know why he does that. Yeah, that makes no sense. So he could throw the no wrench sense. at him. <laughs> to stop him, I guess. Yeah, he threw a wrench at him. And instead of just driving away, he gets out of the car and, like, opts to run. And then she jumps on the back, and she's driving. She's in the back of the pickup truck screaming bloody murdy, murder while, uh, <laughs> you know, Leatherface is, like, Swing around the chainsaw, like showing off the cool <laughs> shots of the whole film. Oh. That that probably the second half of the movie, since she's captured to the very end when the credits roll, I think she screams about ninety five percent of the the movie. I don't think it was dubbed, improvised. It was improvised, but it wasn't dubbed in. I think it was truly hard. And you got to really think about that twenty six hours that they had to take to shoot. I don't even think. I think that 
the, the tension and the stress that comes under an actor to do that. I don't think there was much acting involved towards probably the last hour. And, um, it, you know, it, it was truly scary. I heard one of the producers, the, his daughter came in in the middle of the, the, one of the first scenes when Leatherface uh, puts the girl on the meat hook and he's about to cut, cut the guy's head off with the, the chainsaw. One of the producer's uh, daughters came in and screamed bloody murder and ran all the way down the block. So <laughs> it was something that people have never seen before. Because before that, a lot of the, uh, the, a lot of the uh, horror monsters were actually monsters. And this was actually a man, a crazed man that, you, you know, why was he doing it? Did it really matter? It just ma- what mattered was this could happen to you. You can go get lost in the woods and something horrible could happen. And it was the first of its kind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, kind of to answer your other question you had, I want to hear what you and Anthony have to say about it is, I think if this film were released today, I don't know if it would do the movie theater circuit, but I know for a fact that it would become just an instant horror icon classic. I mean, even with the slasher genre already instilled, I think this film would rise to the top because it competes with horror films of today, and it's still scarier. I, I showed it to Decky a few days ago. She screamed about half a dozen times. I, I agree with you. I, I, I got a direct quote from Toby Hooper that he said after the 40-year anniversary, he said, it would be very hard to do this without executives cramming exposition into it. And he's talking about if they were to remake this today, meaning that they want to throw all this other stuff, like explain, like I said, the backstory, you want mm-hmm. the heroes off, the character's journey. And uh, this movie is just a movie about fun. It's about me sitting in a theater and witnessing this mayhem and this, this craziness, this craziness. And I feel like we're going to get to it right now, the, the remake made with Jessica Biel in 2003. It did not capture the hysteria and the craziness that the original film did. And neither did any of the sequels, although some were good and some were awful. Nothing really captured the, the magic, you know, the lightning in the bottle that the first one did. So I'm going to yeah. move on to the... Uh, 100% agree with your statement there, man. Yeah, man. I think, yeah, I agree. I'm going to say something that's going to make everyone hate me right now. I think the only one that came close to being that insane was Texas Chainsaw 4. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. We're about the next generation with Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> All right. All right. And, we'll get to that in a bit. Okay. All right, so we're going to oh, get... Wait, wait, can we ask Anthony? Anthony, do you think it would hold up today? Um, I do, actually. Yeah? I don't know. I just feel... I just feel like what people really want today is insanity and, like, just crazy, bizarre. People want, like, more and more as horror is coming out. Like, people want more crazy ideas, more insane. And I feel like the fact that that happened in the 70s is something what people want now, which is yeah. pretty impressive, actually. I'll tell you what, I, what I'm going to do for you guys. In a couple of days, I'm going to find the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original screenplay. I'm going to change a couple of names around, and I'm going to submit it into some film festivals. And let's see if they get past the judges and what they actually say about this movie. Because I'm really, really curious of how it would hold up today and what, what's a better way to test it than do it, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Change the ending. Just, just, just write in a different ending so they don't catch it right away. All right, they'll throw and a hammer you know, at him instead of a wrench. Yeah. You got it. Adding a mother character <laughs> and, like, the cops shoot Leatherface or whatever, you know? <laughs> I don't know. We're going we're gonna to move on here. We're going to move on to the remake made in 2003. I think it was made by Platinum Dunes. If I'm mistaken, please tell me and comment. I know that it was directed by Marcus Nispel and written by Scott Kosar. So it, right. it saw Jessica Biel, and it also had the, uh, the guy from, um, oh, what's the movie? Uh, Full Metal Full Jacket. Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. What, what was his name, name, Rob? R. Lee Ermey. That's that, that was Ermey is his name. I don't know. Sheriff Foyt in this movie. So this movie is a little different. uh, It's a lot different than than the original. This one tries to show like a little bit of of a backstory of of Leatherface and his family 
And uh, it doesn't go exactly why Leatherface became Leatherface, but it shows more intricately about the family, about the meatpacking district that they go into, that they talk about and they briefly mention in the original, but they never get into it. It's more about cannibalism in here. Um, they actually show you Leatherface's face, which I, I absolutely hate. They show his face. They do certain things where they complement the uh, the original, in my opinion. Like, for example, he has a guy on a slab, and he takes his foot that's, like, cut, and he throws salt on it, and he preserves it like a, like a, te- a porterhouse steak. Oh, which right. Is, yeah, that was a pretty cool scene. Day. They show him uh, taking skin off of a guy and stitching it together, which is also pretty cool. But it right. really, to my opinion, had that Hollywood-esque, feel to it it was very contrived you know very uh beats where they were supposed to be and um it just didn't feel like a texas chainsaw massacre movie to me so i'm gonna you know what i'm gonna start off with anthony this time and i'd like to hear your opinions of this and is it better is it worse is it the same as the the original all right so uh it's definitely not the mess no i'm just kidding (laughs) it's definitely not better um, than the original. I mean, it's not it's not the worst out of all the sequels, and it's definitely not the best. Um, it had some good qualities. Um, like, there was some, like, cool, like, uh, gore scenes and, like, you know, like, effects that they, that they, they were doing. Um, I love the sheriff because I'm a huge fan of him in Full Metal Jack. He's a great actor, so he definitely played a good role. Um I think probably, though, like, the best thing they had going for him was that Jessica Biel is hot. <laughs> I mean, they picked Jessica Biel for this movie. Who wouldn't go see it? Real yeah. quick, there was no reasoning. When he's chasing her in the third act or through the meat uh, district or the meat uh, right. like the warehouse or wherever it is, the water just falls on her and wets her T-shirt. And, exactly. Know, for what reason? For yeah, no reason. You know, you know why? Biel, that that scene sucked, more. though, because she's wearing a bra. Like, what the <laughs> What the hell, man? It's the seventies, and she's wearing a bra. And that's the difference. I don't know. That's, that's a, the difference that, that was offensive to me as a horror as a horror movie fan, and I mean, you know, a guy who likes girls. Did, did it's like, come on. For a seventies movie, did it have that feel to it that it was like a seventies movie? Because it, it it felt like, like I said, it felt like Hollywood was trying to show a seventies movie, and it took all the grittiness that was in the original out of this movie and it was it did not feel at all like an expo- exploitation film whatsoever it felt like a movie that you and your 13 year old girlfriend would go sit in a theater at 13 14 years old and enjoy it with popcorn which is exactly what i did at the time not with a girl by myself but at 13 i was there <laughs> You know, I, having rewatched this movie, I definitely remember liking it a lot more than I did. Um, the best part of the movie is the set design. The house looks amazing. You okay, know, I when, think it is. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think a lot of the set design is really great. I like the way Leatherface looks, but it doesn't feel like a '70s movie at all. You know, it definitely feels too clean. A lot of parts yeah, polished. And I got I got a lot of issues with the directing style. I can get into it. I, I want to like go ahead and get into the cons, but let's hear what Anthony has to say about that '70s thing. Well, like if it feels like a '70s, the 2003 version, absolutely not. No. Well, I mean, does it even feel like the movie takes place in the '70s at certain points? Yeah, I, 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 I can't like, answer that. I'm like 30. I, I feel like the only the only thing in the I movie that looks like the '70s is the house. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I, I don't know. It just seems modern day in a lot of ways. I don't like the whole like pot subplot they have going on where they're trying to run a, a pinata pot. And I also don't believe the guy would just chuck it in a field. Like maybe he would go hide it. And his friend's just like, why'd you do that, bro? And he's like, cuz. And he's like, all right. Like, that's it, dude. That's like, it's like, what do you say? That was like two grand, like in the seventies, man. That'd be like three months of my pay. I would be flipping out. Even yeah, like the di- the dialogue definitely doesn't feel like seventies. Like especially like the like that boyfriend, I forget his name with the with the dark hair. Yeah. He totally feels like a modern day like actor. Definitely didn't yeah. get an old feel from him at all. I didn't think they had southern accents. Like no. Bit, right? It didn't even feel like a like a Texas chainsaw movie either. Yeah. 
it, di it didn't. It, like I said, it, it was too polished. And you, you might agree with me. With uh, We were discussing it before. And I want you to go into detail about it. What about that, that opening, one of the first scenes in the movie when they pick up the hitchhiker? So it's kind of a role reversal here. They pick up a woman hitchhiker as opposed to a male hitchhiker. And instead of the hitchhiker being crazy, crazed and uh, disturbing and violent, the hitchhiker is scared and crazed because of the experience that she just went through. And what they do is they have this gunshot scene in the beginning of the movie and they show her blow her head off, and the camera... Yeah, yeah take it away. Tell God, me. That, scene, that scene, yeah, that's... I was going to talk about this scene in particular, because this is the problem with this film, like, the directing style of it. Yes. She shoots herself through the head. We get this... It's a cool shot where the camera goes, like, I guess they did it digitally in After Effects. It goes through her head and shows the back of her. And then, like, the tempo completely drops, and they all just kind of stand there. They go outside, they look at the body, and then the girl starts screaming, right? It just, it kind of, it downplays the drama of it. Like, that scene should be scary. I, I could see, like, her getting shot and her brain, brain splattering on the wall, and you're like, that's disgusting. But the way they, like, went through the head made it not look gross. And the fact that she screams, like, 30 seconds later just kind of <laughs> breaks it down. I mean, I, it's, it's the kind of thing they did in, like, Saving, Saving Private Ryan. You know, when there's so much chaos going on that after a while he becomes desensitized to it. And that's why the sound gets drowned out. And there's like this mellowing sound effect. I feel like I'm screaming into the like, computer right now. Um, <laughs> but in Texas Chainsaw, we don't want that to happen. We, we want to feel the terror. Like it's shock, right. right? Because that's supposed to uh, display shock, right? He's shocked on the beach after all these shots. After that thing, her head blows up, the audience is supposed to be shocked. It's supposed to be shocking. You're not supposed to show, like, shock after the fact, because then I'm not shocked anymore. I agree with you. I, I, I think that It style, messed it up. Uh, yeah. yeah. It plays the shock too early. The shock's supposed to happen after the shocking effect. I should be scared first. I, it should be crazy. And then afterwards, you play it down. Instead, there's, like... If it was on a chart, it would be like gunshot, drop, and then shock. And you're like, no, it should be gunshot, shock, and then drop. Or if you're the original, <laughs> just up, 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 up as it goes the whole time. Totally agree. I want to I mention, though, that it, I, it doesn't sell it for me, that kind of stylistic horror where, like, the, like you're saying, that shot where it, it pushes in through the girl's head. And it's like, oh, my yeah. God, this is cool. They also do another shot later in the movie where they're like, they're panning the, the camera, of course, showing like all leather faces, like heads and everything that he's done up to him. Almost like he's like this cool James Bond type or Batman type with all these gadgets. And that's not what it's, what it's about. And I feel like the original movie doesn't do that. It just shows where they are, the environment, and it's unapologetic. It's like, here, you're here. These people are doing what they're doing. It's crazy shit, but this is just the norm of society. There wasn't like this this build up to like, look at this. Here's the chainsaw. Look at this girl's head that has just been blown up. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I feel like less is more, especially in this franchise, where like things like that, like the background, the production, the uh, design, should be subtle. Like in, like in the original movie. And it's the action and the craziness and the tone that, that scares the shit out of the audience. Yeah. Well, what do you think, Anthony? I actually, I like the set design. I don't necessarily like the way they showed it. Like with the angles and stuff and how they made him look like Batman. I don't know if I got that impression also. But that's kind of interesting. Like Batman? <laughs> yeah. He's got all his gadgets. He's got the, the leather <laughs> gloves. Then he has... The big chainsaw, the little chainsaw. It's also like it clashes with the beginning because they find a hitchhiker. Like, how would the Sawyers get away with this if every single time they get a group of people, one of them gets away? Like, she got away and no one's even looking for her. They're bad kidnappers. I don't they're know. really bad kidnappers. Yet, they're, they're geared out like Batman. It's like, what? See, that was the thing about the original. It's supposed to be they've done this so many times. Now in this one, they're not good at it at all. Right, yeah, it's because yeah. there's just so many things wrong. Like, 
it's just the way it was put together. I guess there, I guess the thought process just wasn't. Um, actually, let's go. Let's just go bigger, right to the point. They needed a better director for yeah. that film. Yeah. Because he obviously didn't study the original enough because of how many bad points are in this film. Like what you were just yeah. saying, like like they looked like they were just starting to become this crazy family and doing this to people for like the first or second time. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And uh, I mean, actually, if you look at this director's repertoire, he did like Pathfinder and Conan, which I think are probably two of the worst movies made in the last like 25 <laughs> years. Um, and Conan Barbarian is one of my personal favorite movies ever. And to see that remake just on the screen was just infuriating. And Texas Chainsaw Massacre is that guy's best movie by far. Because I will say, I do like the, the remake. I don't think it's a bad movie. But there's another scene in particular that shows off where he messes up as a director. Uh, she's in the meatpacking uh, facility. And she's running around with all the, I guess they're cow hides. Like, I actually love down, that. Like, like yeah. in Rocky, right? And this is a really cool part. She's like hiding in the cow hide, right? And they cut to her hiding in the cowhide. And then they cut to Leatherface pulling the chain and then show the cow move to scare her. So there, there's no, like, intrigue, right? There's no suspense because you're supposed to show her hiding there. She thinks she's safe. Then all of a sudden they start moving and you're like, what the fuck? And then you show Leatherface doing it. You, you never explain the action before the action happens. Yeah, no, I think it would have been... You... Sorry, Chris. No, you go. You say. But, um, like that, I think that's probably one of the, the coolest scenes in the movie. There's like a lot of tension. Just like, like as soon as it happens, you're just like, oh, okay, this is going to be good. But they didn't execute it. Like, I think it would have been awesome if they would have had Leatherface, like when she's hiding in the meat, just cutting through the meat, like from behind her. And like maybe getting like her shoulder or something. And now she's screaming, falling to the ground, trying to get away. Like, why wouldn't they do something like that? I, I agree. That would be man. fucking awesome. Dude, they, you're right. She barely got a scratch in that yeah. movie. In, in the original Sally, she, even at the very end, the, the hitchhiker gets it. He's cutting her, slicing her back and forth, back and forth. She went through so much terror. What did Jessica Biel really do? At the end, she drives off with a baby, and they, they get, like, nicked while he's, she's driving by him. And that's it. They drive off into the sunset. Totally. There's no consequences for her. Yeah, you see, I really think cuts his arm off. I really think it's because of the choice of the director that he chose to not really fuck with Jessica Biel's role. Yeah, I agree, man. And like when she cuts his arm off, like I didn't believe that part either. She's like 110 pounds, and Leatherface is supposed to be what, like six foot four or something? Weighs like 260. I don't know. He's just a huge guy. Maybe I'm overblowing it. Maybe he's six foot one and weighs 230 i don't know but she somehow like kind of manhandles him and cuts his arm off with a meat cleaver which by the way you can't even do <laughs> like you can't you can't do that she couldn't cut my arm off and i'm five seven like it would get stuck in the bone she wouldn't be able to do it that's not that's not possible and it's stupid she like pops out he like looks at her is like uh and then she just hacks him like eight times and his arm comes off that's not how it works it's dumb <laughs> All right. Before, uh, it could uh, be or two. before I move part. on to the, the next yeah. subject, I just I think we're all in agreement that the 1974 original is way better than the remake. We all agree to that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. We're going to go in a circle. No, right? We agree. We agree. We, we, I guess absolutely. we all agree. Yeah. The 2003 one fucking sucked. Okay, I moving got, on. It's <laughs> not, I, I kind of like it. It's, it was it's okay. midway it's, on my list, it was okay. my ranking list. Well, you have an opportunity right now because we're going to go over right now the best sequel to the 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the worst sequel. We're going to start off with the best sequel, your favorite sequel. We're going to start off with Anthony and we're going to do a round robin and we're going to say why we liked it and what was the best sequel. Go ahead, Ant. Okay. Can I give you my top three do favorite you want. Texas Chainsaw Massacres? Okay. Go nuts. So, it's going to be the original 74 first, That's part a, two, okay. 1986, and then the third one is the beginning. Okay. 
I thought the beginning was amazing with a lot of the kill scenes. I felt like it was actually probably one of the scarier ones. It was very intense. There was a lot going on. Got that. All right, what about you, Rob? Uh, I'm with him. My favorite uh, my favorite sequel is the beginning. Yeah, I think, I think it should have come out instead of the remake. I thought it was a better remake. And I think the only reason why people don't like it as much is because it came out after the remake. It is pretty much the same plot. It's just a better movie in every aspect than the remake. The only leather like, face looks sick. Yeah, I think he's awesome. I think the kills are better. I think it's scarier. I think it's um, the, the family's scarier. Everything. I like it so much more than the remake. But it came out after the remake, and it's the same exact friggin' plot. Because how sick would that have been <laughs> if in the remake she fucking dies at the end? You would have been like, oh, man. Because the problem yeah. is you know how it ends. That's the problem right. with remakes. So if they just changed that, you would have been like, wow, that's crazy. No, I agree with you. They, yeah. they should have went in a different direction. That's why it's superior, the remakes, the prequel's superior to the remake because it, it does that. It goes there. The yeah. person dies at the end. They don't get away. So exactly. It's not the happy ending, even in this crazy, twisted franchise. Yeah. And the worst one, 1990 Leatherface. You know. I fucking hate that. Yeah. That is garbage. <laughs> it doesn't look. look I, I hope anyone here looks at my recent Facebook post. I go into it. I it gets a, it, it doesn't get a fair shake because the MPAA, like, uh, they cut the shit out of that movie. They, they took a lot of, like, graphic footage yeah. and took it away from the movie. I agree. It's very boring and mundane because it's kind of the same plot as the original, but this one is done, like, cr crappy. It's with Viggo Mor Mor Mortison. I know, dude. There's they should nothing just cast nothing Justin there. Timberlake. I, I agree. They should have done the same. Nothing. Yeah, it, it's, he looks like the prettiest pretty boy ever, and they just gave him bad teeth, and now he's an evil hick. It's like, no, you're not. There was just not. You know, you know what the problem was. It wasn't even so bad. It's good. It wasn't enjoyable. I don't watch that movie over and over. Well, movie, <laughs> I do watch over and over. And you guys get to say like it's the worst sequel. And no. it's not my favorite. I, I think the worst one is, is the is Leatherface is uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D. We'll get into that in a second. But one of my favorite ones is Texas Chainsaw Massacre: The Next Generation, the fourth <laughs> one with Matthew Dude. McConaughey. It's crazy. He's bizarre. It's I watch it every time it's on. It's so bad. It's good. It's such a piece of trash. I I don't understand what's going on in the movie. There's a guy who comes in in the in the towards the end of the movie and he goes, "Do you want to be afraid?" And he has nipple rings and <laughs> it makes absolutely no sense. He's he's in the limo. He apologizes. I didn't understand that part. At all. <laughs> it ends with with yeah. Leatherface as a transvestite. Makes no sense either. It's not really a character arc. It's just craziness. And and Renee Zellweger is in it too. Two <laughs> Oscar winning actors are in this piece of shit movie. This you know what's crazy, I think, dude? I think it I was just heard this like, today. What? I just heard this today. I, Go ahead. I heard it on the internet today. I don't know if it's 100% true, but I heard that Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger sued the studio <laughs> yeah. that they couldn't use their names to market the movie. That's, That's true. how much they hated it. It, it was made in like 94. <laughs> it didn't come out to like 97 or 98. Really? Yeah. It was. Wow. It shot, it sat on, it it's crazy. Well. And then it sat on the. I show like that movie and, too. I know. I love Anthony. Don't you love that movie? I thought it was the best. You hated it. Isn't it the best? I fucking hate it. Why? I just wanted to punch Matthew McConaughey in the face of that movie. Oh, yeah, and really? Renelle, Renee Zellweger's acting was the worst it's ever been in her whole career. You know that, that might be true, but I still think it was pretty good. The writer it was the craziness of the I liked, but I didn't like that they actually had to make a parody of one of the best horror films of all time because it just it was just disappointing to me. What was it? What, what was disappointing about it? It was the same setup. Four kids. I, know, I feel like they were making wood. fun of the movie. They were. It was a parody. The second First one. No, I. I, I loved the. I loved. I, I liked how he was a transvestite. Who I, I was thought, the guy at the end of the movie, though? Who was he supposed to be? He's, that, the, he's, the, he's the director of the movie. 
Was he? That was the most confusing part of the no, whole no, film. He, he, apologized. Apologized. he apologized. Is he apologizing for showing yeah. such a bad movie? Is exactly, that what it is? yeah. He was apologizing <laughs> for the movie itself. He was apologizing. He was like the producer or the director or something. He was apologizing to us, the audience, for giving us such a crazy experience. The movie Wait. got super meta. That's why at the end of the movie, in the hospital, she starts seeing characters from the earlier movies. She sees Sally, Le- right? She makes a yeah. character in that movie at the end. Do you yeah, know what I thought? I thought? It, was cool. it got like super meta at the end. It was crazy. Right. <laughs> Do you know what I thought the first time I saw that movie when those guys walked into the house in those suits? Yeah. I'm like, okay, this is a parody. I'm like, what are these guys like from Goodfellas? And they're about to be like, hey, what's going on here? Is fucking Leatherface chopping people up? Yeah. That's what I thought was going to happen. But it took a totally different route. But it was still a weird route. I'm just like, who are these guys? Dude, I, I thought they were wise guys too when they walked in or cops. So I was like, what's going on? Hey, how, how, I really liked the remote control leg. Everyone oh, probably that hated that. I thought that was uh, so funny how, how it's like they're almost making fun of VHS tapes at that point when he has the remote control leg and Renee Zellweger and him are trying to control his leg. <laughs> what about when he sets the girl's back on fire? That's pretty shocking. I, I kind of got like a shrill down my spine when I saw that scene. <laughs> Yeah. I did. I did. I don't know why everybody hates that movie so much. It's no worse than I. I'm telling you, the worst one is is Chex's Chainsaw Massacre 3D. It's fucking horrible. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Before, before we before we get to that, well, you I do no, I do agree. I do agree oh. that 3D is the worst. But yeah, that's my second. Also, like, also, what really pissed me off about the Next Generation is the kills. There's two kills in the whole movie, and both kills you don't even see it happening. What about the helicopter? That what doesn't the constitute plane? the movie being bad. The plane was cool. At the end, how they kill Matt and that, Connie. It's just like, this is Texas Chainsaw. You need some ki- serious kills, or at least to see something. But the first yes. guy he kills, you don't see it. He's just hanging in the back of the truck. And then the second kill, he Matthew McConaughey crushes her skull with his foot, and you don't even get to see it happen. Yeah, but Matthew McConaughey gets his head chopped by a, a plane. True. Well, that's right, a nod. He, he that's a nod to the original. That's given. It's a nod to the original. Instead of a tr- yeah. big truck, it's that. But I'm um, just real this quick. I really just want to move on because we, we got a lot of more topics to cover. So real quick, one of my favorite uh, see- of the series is definitely Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two. And the only reason that I love that movie is because it balls to the wall wacky. So the protagonist Stretch, yeah. the woman Stretch in the movie. I'm not going to get into it for you fans. You know what it's about. This guy gets killed. This guy with a hat, with a cowboy hat, gets killed, and he gets skinned. And Leatherface takes the guy's skin and puts it on the protagonist's face and makes her wear it for about five minutes of the movie. Then she sees the corpse, but the guy has no face and no chest, and he's still alive. He do- he he lets her free, and then he dies in front of her. And you know what she does? She takes the face off of herself and puts it back on the body, which I thought was absurd. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, and there's this awesome, awesome, awesome chainsaw fight at the end of the film with <laughs> Dennis Hopper and, and, and Leatherface himself. It is the coolest scene ever. The chainsaw goes right through Leatherface's stomach. It's one of the best scenes of all the friggin' franchises. Oh, yeah. So, I, I, you know, Toby Hooper, he came back 12 years later to direct that movie. He said it was a uh, comedy slash horror. He did not take it seriously. He went in a total other direction because he knew it wasn't going to top the 1974 version. And I loved it. I loved his character of Chop Top, played by Bill Mosley. I, I, you know, if they ever make a sequel or a spinoff of this movie for the next 50 years, they should make one of Chop Top because he was an amazing character that didn't get enough screen time. Loved I would want from that guy. Well, I would was, be so afraid that guy who was up. real. I would be scared of shit too. It, Bill Mosley was was amazing with the with yeah, the he plated was a head. Complete nut job. Complete yeah, yeah. nut job. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, when I was ten, he scared the crap out of me too. That's the only part of the movie I remember. I watched the rest of it today. You know, it, it, it was they, they were making a spinoff of that. They actually shot a lot of it, but for some reason, it just never came out. Well, I heard Bill Mosley actually made a movie about, like, something about there being in a hair salon. And um, yeah. he made this movie and he showed it to, he made a spin-off movie himself of this Chop Top character in Texas Chainsaw and then showed Toby Hooper. 
And then later on, got the role as Chop Top because of it. I didn't know that until today. Oh, that's cool. Well, there yeah. was a Chop Top spinoff, and they shot a good amount of the movie. And then I heard, who was the other guy who died? The older guy who was in the original one? Oh, I don't know his name. His name. I yeah. wish I have the names here. We're so we're 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 so unprepared. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, uh, I have yeah, it. I heard he died and like kind of derailed the project because they like didn't shoot his scenes yet. Jim Sidow is his name. What is it? I was prepared. It just fell on the floor. My piece of paper. <laughs> Jim Sidow. Too, but Jim Sidow. Decky, Decky cooked my my notebook, and that's what we ate for dinner. Cooked it with the uh, meat of pe- people. <laughs> she, she made she made chili out of my landlord oh my god oh can i get some so real quick just There's moving no on we gotta we gotta move on we gotta wrap up soon um worst sequel i would have to say would be texas chainsaw 3d and the reason because it, there's no rewatchability of it and the continuity is totally absurd it goes from the sawyers being in, it's right after the events that take place of, of the first movie and it shows that the cops coming in and shooting up the place and killing all the remaining Sawyer people except for uh, Leatherface. And then it takes place 20 years later from the 70s where people have smartphones, which is totally unrealistic. It doesn't make any sense. The kills are horrible. The characters suck. And the whole movie should be banned from the United States of America. Yeah, Enough pretty said. Sucks. Enough said. So the I last- told you. Yeah, 3D was, I told you that the 3D was the worst movie that could have possibly have made in the franchise. Just, I hated everything about that movie. Like, literally everything. And the first thing that actually drew me to not even want to watch it, but I did anyway just for the fuck of it, finally, like, years later I watched it, was once I heard the R&B singer Trey Songz was going to be an actor, I was like, whoever this director is does not give a shit about this film if this is who you got in your movie right now yeah i don't know i liked i, I liked how they oh, killed I him it. but not how <laughs> like that they killed him but the way they did it was dumb. i don't know you, you know why that movie sucks like there's two real huge blaring problems with it tell me one the baby of the sawyers or the hewitts i forget what storyline we're going i think we're back to sawyers no more you right the you is the, only ba- the, the baby people in the remake the baby of the hewitts grows up to be a model that makes no fun. They're the Hewitts, man. They're inbred cannibals. Right. Why would she be a model? That's ridiculous. And then, too, like, the whole marketing scheme was they go to this circus funhouse. In the movie, he literally, like, jumps over a fence, runs into the circus house, chases her, runs out, jumps over the fence, and that's the end of the circus. That's <laughs> it. It's, like, five minutes. That, that they sold like, the movie. That movie was, like, a cash cow. That was like whatever we could squeeze out of the franchise. Let's make a quick buck and let's move on. I don't think there was any passion or thought that was like put into that movie. Um, I'm just going to move on here. I'm going to go to our last subject. This is pretty fun for the the fans that are watching. I told each of us to come up with a potential sequel. So if we all owned the franchise, what would we exactly do with it? And I cannot wait. I've been waiting all week to hear your thing, Rob. What you would do with this franchise. Oh, my God. Okay, so I, I went pretty in depth. Okay. So the first shot of the movie is of a chainsaw just revving, revving, revving. You're like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? And then it cuts through a wedding cake. Ooh. Like a red and white velvet wedding cake. And you're like, what? And then it cuts to Reese Witherspoon. And um, yeah. she left she left the town of the Sawyers. She doesn't want to she, – she wants to – reinvent herself she's one of the daughters so reese sawyer is in the big city now and she's getting married to uh like rob lowe or something and rob lowe is this rich guy and she's getting married and they do all this stuff right but she has to go back home to texas to to get her ex-husband to sign the divorce papers it sounds like sweet home alabama (laughs) it's called sweet home texas chainsaw that's actually it (laughs) so she goes back and it's like it's modern day, so it's 40 years later, right? So Leatherface is this super old man, right? Okay. Super old. He's basically like the old guy in the original one, but he has a leather face, right? But he, like, streamlined the killing. They become the factory farm. So there's, like, lemonade stands and shit around to, like, get people off, and they have, like, 
a Halloween fun house and they kill certain people that they make disappear or whatever. Maybe they even have a chili thing. I don't know. So she goes there and her ex-husband is like her brother cousin or something, right? So brother cousin Leatherface Jr. has four fingers on one hand. And they end up bonding, rebonding over the murder of some other people who come into town. Probably the private eyes that Rob Lowe is hired to file to follow his wife to her old Texas town to make sure that she got these divorce papers signed. So they kill the private eyes. She finds out Rob Lowe hired them. She loses faith in Rob Lowe and she removes her glove for the first time in the movie to reveal that she has six fingers. And she holds him up against brother, cousin, Leatherface Jr. to complete the hand because he only has four fingers. Oh. <laughs> anyway, they, they go to the city. They, they decide they're going to get married. They murder Rob Lowe. And the last scene of the movie, you find out that the first scene of the movie was actually real. It was a chainsaw cutting through the wedding cake, which is their new found business model. And they've murdered Rob Lowe. And he's put his face on his own face because he's Leatherface Jr. And duped everyone into thinking they're actually getting married at the end of the wedding. And then they take chainsaws and fucking murder everyone in the wedding party. And the Sawyers have a gigantic wedding. <laughs> Sweet home, Texas chainsaw. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Sweet home. So, very good. Four stars. So I came up with, uh, with a potential sequel. I wanted to call it Texas Chainsaw Massacre Family Reunion. And the reason why I want to say it that way is because I don't want it to have anything to do with the title. So when the people come in there and they see the movie, they get really pissed and aggravated because the marketing totally threw them off. It has nothing to do with a family reunion. We don't see the Sawyers. What the, the thing is about is that it's going to take place 20 years after the Sawyers all die. And people take over the, the farm and they, uh, they want to restore it. And they're all vegans. And uh, Le Te Leatherface is in the woods hiding, for, hiding out for the last 20 years. And... Um, one of the girls is interested in eating meat, the little girl. And then one day there is a home invasion. And the dad, uh, he gets too afraid and he doesn't help and protect the family. And the, the people are about to kill the family. And Leatherface comes out and kills all these people. Then what he does is he ends up killing the father and taking his skin and putting him on his face. And the whole movie is about the dad trying, I mean, Leatherface <laughs> trying to assimilate with his family and be a good father. But eventually he just kills them all. The end. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe he has a transvestite suit during the whole movie. Just I, make I it up. He's a transvestite in the original. He's putting on makeup and stuff. He was always into like awesome. dressing like women. Anthony? I don't give a fuck about another sequel happening because I it's just it's so fucking annoying them trying to make all these sequels that are just complete shit the last three were complete shit to me I don't want to see anybody else try and make another one because it's probably going to be shit too they should just leave it leave it alone you didn't like Leatherface 2017 no I kind of liked it like, it's, it's not really a Texas Chainsaw movie. I, it was pretty I, I, gave, I gave it, like, a 5 out of 10. Really? I think it has one of the best kills in the franchise. I think when he kills Steven Dwarf and he chainsaws his hands off before chainsawing him, it's awesome. That's cool, but, like, I don't, I don't like this. I don't like the storyline. I don't like the way Leatherface looks. I just, I didn't really get that real, like, Leatherface feel from it. Oh, yeah. They, they fuck up Leatherface pretty bad. Yeah. All right, guys, uh, you know, we were out of time, so thank you for joining me. I appreciate it, Rob and oh. Anthony. Hey, uh, dude, can we do our favorite say? kills? Favorite kills? Yeah, oh, yeah we can do that. Kills real quick? Yeah, go ahead, Rob. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, sorry. All right. Uh, I like it when he kills the guy in the wheelchair in the first one. That's awesome. Um, and then when you go to the beginning and he kills the guy with the sledgehammer, Oh, that's the most iconic. That's the best one, yeah. That's, like, amazing. And then and then when Steven Dwarf gets killed in the latest movie, pretty much that scene is why I like the latest movie. Yeah, my favorite is probably when he throws the girl on the meat hook in the original one, and then he cuts – when the guy's, like, half dead and he cuts his head off, but you don't see anything. And you think, yeah. like, that this movie has so much blood in it. Meanwhile, there's not a drop. 
The only time you really see blood is when her finger's getting sucked by Grandpa, and at the end when the chainsaw comes down on his uh, on his leg when it on Leatherface's leg. That's about it. Okay. Anthony, uh, mine uh, is the wheelchair one, like Rob said, and uh, the kill in uh, the beginning when um, he puts the chainsaw through his stomach and then he lifts up up and up, up in the air and he's still chainsawing him and he throws him down on the ground. That was brutal. So awesome. That's pretty cool. That's pretty Love awesome. That part. So, yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you, Rob and Anthony, for coming on the show again. Um, everybody, the viewers out there, like and subscribe to Pod from the Crypt. Again, that's Pod from the Crypt. And in the comment section below, please tell us what you guys want us to review next. We love crazy horror movies. We love hidden gem movies. We love it all. We'll see you next week. Thank you, everybody. Smell you later.